we are going to look at dynamic vacuum systems. So to give you a motivation, basically a dynamic vacuum system is where the process uh, lasts a few seconds and you are interested in the dynamic response of the system to a phenomenon. And that phenomenon can be typically gas injections, that can be starting a pump, opening a valve, like in this example here. And it's important to emphasize that these processes that MOFO can simulate uh, need to be short, so up to about half minute, because all the molecular trajectories during that period have to be simulated. So for quick systems, this is something that MoFlo can calculate. For pump downs lasting several days or weeks, uh, currently MoFlo cannot simulate those. So let's look at an example. And for that, basically, we are loading a geometry that I have shared on the website. It's an acoustic delay line, which I just open and scroll apps. So obviously this is an imaginary system. Uh, the idea is that you inject gas from one side and as it propagates in the system due to these geometric conductance limitations, instead of a fast inrush, uh, the gas will have some delay. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, physically this is valid, so typically an acoustic delay line is uh, not so simple, but it's good to practice. So what we're going to do first is, uh, could be like a static simulation. So basically we will add just a facet which will record the pressure profile all along our system. We will set up outgassing, we will set up pumps, and at, until that point it will be like a classical morpho simulation. After that we will add the time dependent properties. So what I do first is basically I'd like to have a profile which is running all along my system. For that, I chose the bottleneck because if uh, the profile that I create is small enough that it fits this part, then it will fit the other parts as well. For that, what I will do is simply I select, I go to the front view, and here I select two vertices, which are the smallest ones, and then to make sure that they span the whole fish system, I will project them to this facet and that facet as well. So I'm going into the vertex and mirror project command. I'm selecting the facet at the end, and basically I'm copy mirroring to the plane of the selected facet. Sorry, I'm copy projecting. And once this is done, I'm deselecting these vertices. Uh, yeah, that way. I will select those that I just created, and for that I have to zoom in. By the way, there is a special command in the vertex menu. There is a select isolated vertex, and then you automatically get these two, which are not part of the facet. I will select this asset. Yeah, what I have to uh, switch to facet mode, and I will do a copy project. So at this point, I have the four corners of the facet that I'm trying to create, so I'm going to vertex and creating a facet with a convex hull. This is fine. And then I need a few additional things to make it a facet that's actually counting the pressure. So I will make it two-sided so it can get statistics not only from its normal vector side but from both. I will make the opacity zero so that it's transparent. I will check the UV vectors. U is the direction I need for the profile. I will just add it. And then finally, I'm creating a texture, uh, which is, I'm choosing a resolution by trial and error. 50 is maybe too much. Yeah, 25 seems correct with 26,000 cells. Oh yeah, and I have to select that this will count the transparent passes. So we have set up the textures, it's a good idea to save the file because so far we've been working on the STL file, so I will just call it adl1.zip. And yeah, what we still have to do is to add physics to our simulation. So basically I'm choosing that the gas is coming from here. At this point I will just put one as the outgassing rate, an arbitrary unit, and let's say that everything that made it to the other side will be uh, found away. So if I run the simulation at this point, yeah, and I just 
save it once again. It's a perfectly valid simulation. So if I turn on the texture, then you can see that basically the gas is coming from the left side. I think the sticking factor didn't stick. I will just apply it again. Yeah, and much better. So basically what we're expecting is like a gradient. Also, you can see that maybe this texture resolution is too high. Um, the reason I'm a bit conservative here is that when you're making a time-dependent simulation, all your textures have to be stored for every moment. So if you're simulating 1000 moments, this texture would have to be saved 1000 times. So now that I can see it on the screen, I will slightly reduce its resolution. So instead of 25, maybe just go with 10. This is still enough to see how the system behaves. Yeah, it's uh, better. And just to be clear, we still have the profile plotter available. So if I add a curve, as expected, we have a decay of the pressure from the gas injection to the pump side. And uh, we can see that as the conductance is rising over the length of the pipe, uh, you have steeper or less steep steps. So at this point, this is a classical vacuum simulation. I will just stop it. I will save it. And now it's time to actually make it time dependent. So what we will first uh, check is how quickly the gas injected from this side uh, fills the tube. So for that, we will still have a constant outgassing of one. We will still have a constant pumping of one. And yeah, actually, this is the mistake I made last time. So basically, I'm just turning off the outgassing on this side. Yeah, OK, this is much better. So yeah, basically, what we're interested in is what's happening in the initial moments when the system is uh, filling up with gas. So for that, we, we use for the first time this time menu, and we will edit moments. So these are the moments that you are asking MoFlow to record. At this point, we don't have much idea how long the moments have to be. We expect that this is a system which is quickly filling up, so I'm just uh, trying a few moments. So for example, I'm putting 10 to the minus 4 seconds, 2 to the minus 4 seconds, and actually, like instead of manually writing, you can make a series. So if you write 3 to the minus 4, and then a delta, which is like a step of 1 to the minus 4, and the final moment, which is 10 to the minus 3, then this is seven moments, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, finally. Uh, just a small remark that sometimes rounding errors cause the final moment not to be in it, so if you get slightly larger volume, it will be included. The next thing that you have to uh, define is the time window. So basically, all these moments will be recorded, but there have to be some tolerance. Because the way MoFlow calculates time-dependent pressures is that it looks at what collisions happen at 1 to the minus 4, 2 to the minus 4, and so on, moments. However, no heat is happening exactly at that time, so you would like to give a little bit of tolerance. And as a time rule, if you have steps of 10 to the minus 4 seconds, the time window itself could be 10 to the minus 4. What it means is that, for example, in this case, all the hits happening between 1.5 to the minus 4 and 2.5 to the minus 4 will be recorded as happening at this moment. I click apply. Uh, use Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is uh, telling you the speed distribution of the gas. Don't forget that the speed distribution is important for calculating the pressure, but also this is important for seeing the propagation of the gas. If you disable this, your simulation is somewhat uh, faster than all the speeds represent the average speed. If you uh, disable the constant flow, then the last moment that is calculated will be 10 to the minus 3. And uh, to explain all this better, there is like a small presentation to help visualize this. So basically, when you're doing a time dependent calculation, uh, instead of recording hits, and for this, I will just show a custom slideshow, play from current slide. Okay, so basically a molecule 
first is the wall and we calculate at what time that happened, let's say 1.9 seconds. And instead of recording every hit one by one and storing millions of hit to evaluate the simulation, there is a better way to do it. You first define the time moments, and this is what uh, we've been doing so far on the interface. And then every time there is a hit, Moleflow checks what moment it happened at. In this example, moments are registered at 2, 4, and 6 seconds with a tolerance of uh, plus minus 1 second, so like a total time window of 2. And since it happened at 1.9, this belongs to moment 2. And that way, you're just increasing counters, and the memory we store is the same regardless of the number of hits. And the reason I was showing this is that here you can see why the constant flow calculation is an important option. If you're not calculating the constant flow, then after six seconds, we don't care anymore what the system does because we are only calculating the defined moment. So at that point, I don't have to trace the molecule further until it goes in the system or exits. If constant flow is calculated, then the molecule is traced all the way until it reaches the exit. So I will just apply this. I will start the simulation. And right now, uh, it's still showing exactly the same pressure, but that's because by default, uh, Moflo is showing you the constant, uh, so like the static pressure. And if you go to time settings, even during when the simulation is running, you can see that currently it's moment number zero corresponding to the constant flow that is being displayed. If you click on one, then you can see that even with this texture, you can see that a few molecules arrive here. And as time starts to increase, you can see that the pressure is slowly starting to increase in the system. So here you've got a little bit more gas. Uh, obviously, we underestimated the uh, time required for the simulation to complete. So we could edit these moments and actually we could make it simulate longer. So instead of something to the minus 3, I will just put 10 times longer, something to the minus 3. Let's put it right here. All right, and then the simulation can be restarted. So now, since the simulation is taking longer, you can actually, yeah, apparently this did not stick. I will just edit it again. I click away, so it's taking into account, and I restart the simulation. So now it's working better. Basically, as I'm increasing the time, you can see as the particles move along. And there are several things to do when you're uh, querying the time-dependent data of the simulation. First thing is that the profile plotter is also time-dependent. So as I'm moving with different moments, you can see that the profile plotter is actually uh, changing as I'm switching moments. Let me just pause the simulation. So first, some gas is coming to my system, and as time passes, the pressure increases along the acoustic delay line. Also, for texture scaling, it's important that right now, this is the maximum pressure I achieve. And the reason that the highest color is not purple, but only yellow, is because it's being scaled to the maximum achievable pressure. So uh, if I disable include constant flow, then actually the texture scaling chooses the maximum among the moments. So here I get like a higher pressure. In logarithmic scale, we can see that some particles due to the maximum loss and distribution can actually make it really far. Uh, I believe that at this point, I need to increase the time even further. Now I will delete these lines and I will simply do a series. So starting from 10 to the minus two, read the step of 10 to the minus two, I like to go all the way to one second, which is 99 moments. And correspondingly, I'm increasing the time window to 10 to the minus 2. And I will just uh, disable constant flow for this simplicity. So let's see what happens. Uh, right now, I've got the first moment. And as I'm making time advance, you can see that the pressure starts to increase in the system, especially at the profile plotter. 
You can also see that because uh, for a heat of one second, I need the molecule to stay one second in the system, which is not always happening. Sometimes it gets pumped before. The simulations got a lot of statistical error. But instead of scanning each moment up to 100, you have a special plotter tool. It's called time-wise plotter. And what it does is basically it shows many profiles on the same screen. So here I can select the facet that had a profile and up to 50 different profiles I can show, now, show them on the same screen. So obviously there is still a lot of statistical scattering but if I'm going back to the first moment you can see that they are highlighted so basically, as the time advances, pressure increases and slowly it converges to the final solution. A few useful tools, like instead of stepping one by one, you can step with a delta of 10. So you can quickly step. And the same goes for profile plotter. By default, it's uh, the first 50 moments that are displayed. But if I'd like to, for example, visualize every fifth up to the 99th moment. It's doing an autosave. Then pressing enter, I can do that as well. So you can see that now only every fifth is being displayed and that way I can nicely see how the pressure converges. Okay, and finally one uh, tool that is also important to uh, see the evolution of my system. For example, we'd like to see the pressure uh, at one of the facets. Since I need a lot of statistics, I will choose one which is relatively big. So I'd like to see how the pressure evolves on this facet. For this, I will go to the pressure evolution plotter. And here, I don't have a list. Basically, any facet can be added to this pressure evolution plotter. So just by selecting it, I can click on its selected facet. So here we can see that the pressure starts from zero and slowly it rises to a higher volume. And I can add many more. So for example, I can select this facet. I add it. And you can see that here the increase is actually much faster. And if I would go to uh, like logarithmic X scale, or even logarithmic wide scale, you can see that basically the run-up of the pressure at the end of the system has a delay compared to the beginning of the system. There are many other tools which behave a little bit differently when you're doing a time-dependent simulation. For example, you can see that the facet heats here have turned blue. And blue in general means that it's a time-dependent quantity. So if I go back to a uh, constant flow, then it's a black quantity, so it means that it's like the final pressure. But as I'm scanning through the moments, you can see that first I get a very few hits, and as I'm going forward in time, the number of hits increases because it's the time dependent quantity. Other things that become blue is in the facet details, many things are constant, like the sticking factor opacity and so on. But some physical quantities, like heat infantry, density, pressure, average molecular speed, they are also time dependent and they are different for every moment. Same goes for the texture plotter. Here I've got only one facet with the texture. And yeah, actually, here they are not marked as blue, but still, for every moment, there is one texture. The final thing, which is time dependent, is the formula editor. For example, if I ask all the Monte Carlo hits, then once again, in the case of constant flow, it's a quantity. And as I go, basically it's a time dependent moment. Now, apparently, the sum hit is for the whole simulation. So instead of this, I will put this is facet 1051. So I will just put heat from facet 1000 heat each to one. And as I'm scanning through, you can see that this is the quantity that changes. Okay, this is a good moment to save the simulation.
currently Morpho cannot do an animation yet, but if you do a screen recording where you click through all the moments and it will accelerate the video, then you can see the dynamic expansion of the system. Now at this point, everything was static. So basically I started injecting gas, uh, always at one millibar times liter per second. The pumping was always at one. But not only the recording can be time dependent, but also the behavior of the system can be time dependent. Uh, there are three parameters which can vary with time. First is the outgassing. So typically you can have a custom injection factor. You can have a, a time dependent sticking factor. So it means that you can simulate a pump that turns on a little bit later. And you can also uh, have time dependent opacity. So to make our system a little bit more complex, we would have a time dependent outgassing, time dependent pump, and why not cut the system in uh, two by simply adding a valve here at this point. So the simplest way to add the valve is to just create a passive that cuts this hole. I will try to uh, select it carefully. There are a few extra vertices that I have selected. I will select those. And at this point, I'm creating a facet in this part. I will just click away, and this should be two sided. And since this is a different geometry, I will just save it as FSD line 9 time bit outgassing. Okay. So to control my system, uh, during the time, I have to define parameters. So first, let's control this opacity. And for that, instead of writing a number, you are free to create a variable or parameter, which will be like a valve state. And I'll just apply it. And I get an error message that opacity parameter valve state isn't defined, which is fine because we're just about to uh, do that. So I go to Edit Parameters, and this is the parameter editor that we'll be using to govern our system for time dependent simulations. So right now there is only one thing in the catalog, it's a direct burst. Basically it's a very quick uh, path of gas. It's saved in the folder of Moleflow, so every time you load Moleflow this is automatically uh, loaded. That's why you have the catalog name uh, prefix. So what we're going to do is we are defining a new parameter whose name will be valve state. So what we'd like to do is uh, add the, we'd like to keep the valve closed until let's say 0 0.5 seconds, which is the half of the time that we are simulating. We are simulating at the one seconds. So until that it will be one. Let's open up the valve in 0 0.1 seconds. This is the mechanical time it requires. And basically that's it. So like uh, from the beginning of the time, the value is kept until the first defined moment. Then it's a linear interpolation between the defined moments. Support is coming for logarithmic interpolation, which might be beneficial for gas injection. And then the last value is kept until the end of the simulation. So even if only the variable part is being plotted, Right now, from 0 to half second, we've got a perfect opacity. In 0 0.1 second, the valve opens, and then for the rest of 0 0.4 seconds, the valve uh, is kept open. So we just click Apply. And yeah, let's see what happens. So I will just launch my simulation. And you can see that, okay, right now the simulation is uh, running. Let's go to time settings. And if you did everything correctly, like let's go back to the first moment. So you can see that first, I'm starting an in injection. Very quickly, I'm filling up the gas. 
the gas pressure is steadily increasing because I'm keeping injecting, but it cannot proceed to the rest of the system. Now let's go fast forward to 0.5 seconds. In 0.5, the valve slowly starts opening up. And as it opens more and more, very quickly the gas, whose pressure is significantly higher than in the rest of the system, is expanding to the rest of the system. And until the end of like one moment, I get the pressure gradient, which we, uh, which we got used to in the previous simulation. To be a little bit more visual, it's interesting to uh, see the time lapse plotter. I will just put the simulation here. And you can see that, I will just make it somewhat smaller. And go to the time settings. Yeah, so first you can see that the pressure is uh, relatively low. It starts to increase, but there is a cutoff at the valve. And after 0 0.5 seconds, it starts to expand to the other side of the system until we get like a gradient corresponding to a conductivity. If you go to this pressure evolution plotter, we will see the same thing. You can see that the pressure is linearly rising because the outgassing rate is the constant in the first part of the system. And then when we open up the valve, the high pressure part starts to decrease exponentially and the other part is starting to increase. On a logarithmic scale, you can see more or less a straight curve. So at this point, opacity is already uh, controlled independently. Let's save the simulation. And we can actually uh, govern the gas injection as well as a time dependent unit. I go to the parameters. I create a new outgassing. So let's call it injection. So let's say that up to 0 0.1 second, I'm not injecting any gas, zero. Starting at 0 0.11 seconds, so immediately after I put a heavy outgassing, I keep that outgassing up to 0 0.3 seconds and after 0 0.3 seconds, I pull it down to zero. This will be like a heavy weight function. Okay, let's check what's happening. Let's go back to one. Oh, and yeah, and uh, obviously I have just defined this parameter, but I have to assign it to the uh, Outgazing, so I will just type the name of the parameter injection and let's do it. So now it's working as expected. Up to 0 0.1 second, the pressure is zero all over the system. And 0 0.1 injection starts, the pressure increases up to 0 0.3 seconds, then the pressure is constant and fast forwarding to 0 0.1, and then the pressure is slowly decaying all over the system. If you look at the pressure evolution plotter, we can see that zero ramp up, you keep the pressure, and then finally an exponential decay, a straight line. Or we can go to the time-wise plotter. And basically, it's the same story. So you can see that first I had zero pressure, then I'm ramping it up, that pressure is capped, and slowly it's equalizing with the rest of the system until it goes back to zero. Okay, and at this point you get how it works, but let's make one thing more thing different. Let's make pump time pending as well. Yeah, it's not defined yet because we're just going to define that. So up to, let's say, 0 0.7 seconds, let's turn off the pump, and then at 0 0.71 seconds, let's start the pump at full speed. 
I will just apply it and let's see what happens. So basically up to 0 0.1 second I get zero pressure. Then I'm starting to inject some gas. The gas injection stops at 0 0.3 seconds. I keep it for a while. Then I open up the valve, but at this point there is no pumping, so the pressure becomes absolutely uniform. Then I start up the pump, and the pump slowly takes away the particles from all of the system. Let's see one last time this in the pressure evolution. You can see zero ramp up. The two systems, after opening the valve, equalize to more or less the same pressure, and then finally I start the pump, which is having an immediate effect on the end of the pipe and the rest a little bit of less effect. So I'm saving this and I'm saving the solution as acoustic delay line time dependent outgassing. So this is downloadable from the website. Uh, hope you find this useful.